Shankar Chakravarti. Good to have on the BS Banking Show. See, the Reserve Bank Survey on Climate Change and Sustainable Finance of July 2002 made right. a case that most banks are not ESG ready or they don't have a policy in place. Why right. do you think this is the case? Uh, so, uh, you know, the concept of uh, ESG has uh, is relatively new compared to the conventional risk management frameworks that banks has been using, hmm. which is fairly uh, well established and old. And the concept of ESG is actually new. So uh, while uh, uh, it is true that a lot of banks are still grappling with the ideas, but we also have to understand that uh, we, uh, we, we don't have enough data to establish the impact of ESG uh, factors on the, uh, on the credit at the bank. So even if a bank, uh, so ultimately what are we looking at? You know, w w w the banks has to establish uh, uh, the impact of ESG factors on the debt repayment ability of the, uh, uh, of the borrowers, right? So, uh, so this is one factor which is uh, very, very important for them to adopt uh, ESG uh, and use ESG factors to identify better quality credit and channel their resources towards uh, better quality credit based on uh, ESG factors. Now to do that, one needs to have uh, at least two economic cycles data uh, whereby you can establish the uh, uh, correlation between uh, the impact, uh, the, the factors and the impact of those factors. So, so this is what most of the banks are working on. We can say that we, we you know, the, the, uh, I also agree with the point that, uh, yes, a lot of banks are not ready, uh, but at least uh, two or three banks I am working with very closely I have seen that they are making very uh, quick progress on that. I cannot say that, unfortunately, for all the banks, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because because it's a uh, 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 you know a lot of banks are uh, lagging behind in terms of their understanding of the uh, issues. Second uh, aspect of ESG is uh, identifying areas where uh, so one part is being able to predict major credit failures using the E, S, and G principles. The other aspect of banking is to uh, uh, understand for their existing exposure, uh, they need to understand where the uh, uh, exposure lies. So for that, they need to build very detailed uh, taxonomy, which currently is uh, uh, was missing in India. You know, till, till at least three years back, I can tell you that there was uh, uh, efforts uh, uh, sporadically which was made here and there. But when we started building the ESG rating company, we realized that uh, the taxonomies are not uh, uh, available. And we had to actually do all the uh, uh, work uh, by ourselves and building the models, but the tools, the indicators, and the entire taxonomy uh, ground up from scratch. Scratch, which was not the case for when we look at US based companies, that is not the case because you get a lot of lot of uh, uh, work uh, at the end of FSSB or GRI or even UNPRI. A lot of work has happened. So, so essentially, India lagged behind till I can tell you that little about a couple of years back, India literally did not have uh, anything. Uh, in our case, also, what we have done is we have taken heavily from GRI and UNPRI and FSSB to build our uh, taxonomy. And I can tell you that now we have the taxonomy. A couple of banks are using uh, our taxonomy also. Uh, uh, but but you are right uh, that uh, there is a, you know, uh, there is a lot of gap between uh, yeah. where, where the uh, regulators expect the banks to be and where they are connected. In greed finance, which agency is to evaluate and certify it is indeed so, and end use of funds is, is to be monitored. Right. So uh, you you know that rating agencies are actually uh, asked by the uh, market regulators to uh, monitor uh, use of end use of funds. So this is already regulated. Uh, if you look at the, I can send you the recent guidelines uh, to that effect. It has come about a 
one and a half, half years back, uh, SEBI came up with this uh, directive where whenever a public issue happens, a, a company also has to appoint a monitoring agency for uh, carrying out uh, this activity. And uh, rating agencies are the eligible, you know, all rating agencies are given the permission to do that uh, work. So, uh, so there is uh, a framework in place, but we have to, uh, uh, we are yet to see how well it is working. You know, uh, we, we, uh, I, I, uh, because this is a new initiative uh, at this point of time, I will not be able to tell you that rating agencies have caught uh, misuse of funds or misdirection of mm. funds as yet. But you can expect that in next uh, couple of years time, you you know, this is something that is likely yeah. to happen. Do you think there'll be take enough takers for green deposits in a big way when there has been no incentives for take, doing so? You know, in the short term, the concept of ESG may not naturally uh, uh, give you the indication that it is economically uh, viable. You know, the, the, this is where I think the uh, understanding of the concept of ESG is little convoluted in the minds of people. When you want to do business the right way, let us broadly say that, you know, ESG means uh, doing business in the right way, right? So in the very short term, doing business in the right way may not really give uh, any short-term benefit. You know, paying taxes on time has long-term positive uh, yield for the company. Uh, you will avoid penalty, you will avoid reputation risk and so on. But if you say, if you see, if you are able to avoid tax and get away with it, in the short run, it benefits the company, right? So, uh, so ESG is actually a concept which cannot be applied very effectively in the very short run. So, mm. if you say that, uh, you know, when, when you say that, uh, you know, if say, for example, a bank uh, raises green deposits with the objective that these deposits will be directed towards uh, uh, projects, which is uh, ESG compliant in nature, mm. right? And now, it it may not naturally uh, mean that these deposits will have better returns, right? So, uh, so how uh, these if ESG if doing business uh, in a ESG compliant manner has a higher price to pay in the form of higher interest rate, then ESG as a concept does not make sense. If ultimately ESG practices don't improve your cost structure it really doesn't make sense as a proposal. So if ESG funds are not cheaper than normal funds, then how will the transition happen for in large scale from non-ESG fuels to ESG compliant fuels and non-ESG kind of business to ESG compliant business? And if you are, if banks are going to charge a higher interest to uh, the companies for, uh, uh, for ESG compliant projects and thereby provide a higher uh, uh, interest rate to the depositors of green deposits, it is not going to work. So there has to be an incentive mechanism which banks has to figure out or the government has to figure out for uh, uh, this to happen. I I look at uh, ESG as uh, a more holistic uh, phenomena. I don't think that, say for example, this concept of ESG funds that are there. You know, if you look at a uh, look at carefully these ESG funds, a lot of these ESG funds are nothing but uh, IT funds, uh, and in some cases, ESG funds actually have a lower ESG score than a non-ESG fund. So this is also something that we have seen. So, it, 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 so con con question is that that if we have to make a huge transition towards ESG compliance, is it possible that we create separate in the, uh, you know, kind of instruments and direct resources towards those instruments, or, or we will try to tell all the businesses that they should follow ESG because it will ultimately make them more uh, sustainable in the long run. Now, lastly, at the societal level, what will it take to get the, to get a societal buy-in into this? We have to show and we have to prove that ESG is ultimately. Uh, practical, uh, sensical thing to do. India is, Indian society is inherently, uh, 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 inherently uh, efficient. However, with more and more Western influence, 
uh, you know things are changing and uh, while on one end we we can see that our kids are extremely uh, aware about the global uh, climate change and all these kind of phenomena but on the other hand the ability of ourselves to recycle is uh, going down you know our parents would use a nokia phone they will repair it three times four times in their lifetime and will use it for 10 years but our kids will probably not have any way of repairing an iphone and reusing it or any such phone so so i think i think at a societal level the change can only come when people actually see the benefit uh, from uh, from practicing esg if practicing esg is going to make your life more uncomfortable more miserable and more expensive i don't think people will absorb it. so we have to create this kind of incentives uh, for making you know i gave you the example of water it is very easy for the government to make water more expensive when they are not used in a uh, uh, efficient manner and if that is that, th that those disincentives are created and conversely incentives are created for uh, uh, practicing uh, esg i think i think uh, society will ultimately accept it shankar chakravarti thanks for being one of our on the bs backing show we look forward to having you again have a good day thank you thank, thank you, you. If you like this video share it and subscribe to Business Standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on YouTube Twitter Facebook Instagram Telegram and LinkedIn I am the blue of the limitless sky I am the inspiration that let success so high I will Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.